Okay, so we've got um, a double dog, double dog. We've got a cat and uh, a dog in this portrait. So it's a double portrait. Uh, it's not a huge one, so it's quite tricky to get all the details in portraits this size when they're doubles. Uh, it's 12 by 8 inches. It's the smallest size I offer for uh, double portraits double pet portraits it's not not really worth going any smaller uh, you lose so much of the detail and it makes it trickier to draw um, and get the amount of detail I like in um, I'm starting with the cat's eyes I always like to start with the eyes and uh, as it's so small it really is one of the portraits where you have to keep your pencil fairly sharp to get those details in and I don't like to constantly keep sharpening pencils but sometimes you don't don't have a choice I'm using here this one that I've got now is an old Derwent pastel pencil. You can't get this colour anymore. Um, they had an arranging, an amazing range of pencils, and uh, they um, changed the selection. Oh, I don't know, ten, ten years ago, maybe longer. And uh, I've only got a few of certain colours left, and they are like gold dust to me. And I love them, and I really don't want them to run out. <laughs> they are going to eventually. But that was a, a, a green umber, sorry, put it down. Um, green umber D, um, which I don't think you can get in the new range. And I also used a an olive green dark from their current range. Um, this is a brown earth, Derwent brown earth. Um, just using to do the shadows in the eyes and his right eye is in more shadow than the left I'm going to fill in that pupil area and they're quite thin slits Sometimes the smaller you go on a portrait, the longer it takes, you wouldn't think, but it is, like I say, harder to get in all those details that you want. Oh, this is a raw umber. This is, this is a good colour for green cat's eyes, parts of it. And just it's got a bit of a, a shadow there. I've got to remember that to hold the pencil in a way you can see it when I'm filming. Um, and that's not blood on my finger. I don't know, I've caught my thumb there. Just blocking in some of the, the shadow under his chin here. While well, I've got this colour in my hand. Use the squeaky chair. I don't know why it's doing that. I can't. Didn't seem to stop it. And as you can see, this raw amber has got quite a green, greenish tinge to it, and that's why it's quite good. Quite good for the eyes. just want to block in some of the basic shapes so we can build up from there and see he's beginning to take shape got, got his jawline in I'm 
to do all the darks in that colour under, but it, they do have this this tinge under his chin. This colour is quite good in this shadow. If you can hear some funny scratching in the background, that's not my pastel pencil. That's Maggie trying to dig herself a bed by my feet and get comfortable. Now I'm going in over the um, the raw umber just to change the colour on the shadow slightly. It wasn't quite the colour I wanted. In fact, I probably will be going darker. I find cat's mouths really tricky. It's quite important to get this, this shape right. And I don't know why, it's one of the things I, I find quite tricky in, in cat portraits. Never known why. I'm going to use this colour, which is, I don't know the actual name of it, but it's the Faber Castell Pit. Um, probably a burnt sienna, I would think, maybe. But the code is 283. And it's one of my popular pencils, and I'm going to block in uh, while I've got it in my hand just some of the tabby stripes so just continue continue blocking in the highlights maybe just going over the um, burnt ochre to lighten them lighten it a bit as you can see I don't really um, blend with my finger at all at all yet and I think I hope a lot of people say they struggle with pastels they, they get them so they say oh I blend and they get so muddy and I think the key to this is to absolutely limit your blending with your fingers um, as much as you can because that really will just lead to a muddied effect. Um, yeah, I think if you go in with your finger and try and blend, certainly if you try and blend now, it's it's not going to, going to work. I'm just going to come back, going to come back, sorry. And uh, try and adjust the shape of the eye. It goes in a bit too steep an angle. I need to bring it round down a bit more. Just get the shape right. Tricky eyes! a bit better. Need to find my green umber again just to it hasn't got that heavy heavy line under his eye there and I need to find a darker green. I'm really really sorry about the squeaking of my chair I boiled it and everything. I hope I can actually edit it out in the end and you'll be all sitting there going, what oh, squeaking chair? It's almost a bit too green. I probably need to blend this off with some brown turn it down to see if the shouldn't really blow the dust away but a bit of a bad habit that I've got into 
but if you find the dust a bit of a problem with pastels it's probably a good idea to try and avoid doing that. Just go return down the shape of his he's got quite a pointy little chin and again this is really just I'm just trying to block in the lights and the darks that's why I'm jumping all over the place a bit um, Sort of where I see it needs doing, I'm jumping in and doing it. But going going back to the blending, um, what is really good is actually when you've got a couple of layers down, you can actually start blending with your pencils. So you really don't need to use your your finger to do that job. Sometimes I will soften things down with the finger. But um, not always. I try and keep the most of the blending to be done left to be done by the pastel pencils. And that is really how I found I avoid the muddy look that I know a lot of people struggle with. I think his face is starting to take shape a little bit better now. And the right side is quite dark and shadow, particularly towards the, the bottom of his face. But again, I'm just blocking in this mid-tone and then I can go darker from there. Also just paying attention to the shape of his face because I've lost a bit of the outline due to the, the pan pastel. Just um, So here I can just, because I just want to reinforce that outline pick up the pan pastel as you can see it goes quite nicely over the pastel pencil and I'm using the soft tool to get into those edges rather than a big sponge so I can get in nice and close without going over my outline like so. That looks a bit better. Need a bit down here. I mean if you did use, I mean I think these soft tools are actually a, a great tool to have anyway even if I haven't got the quite the right colour for the background for the pan pastels and I've used a pastel, soft pastel stick I can use the soft tool to do exactly the same Just move the pastel around on the paper and uh, get it exactly where I wanted. Now I will just soften it a bit with my finger here but I'm not trying to mix two colours so it doesn't really matter and so you're not really going to get that muddy, you don't need to worry about that muddied look and it just gives tends to give a smoother blend than the sponge like so but the background will we will return to that again at some point This is another great pencil just to um, work on the mid-tones again but deepen them a bit and this is I'm guessing it's a burnt ochre again I don't know the names I know the numbers but I know the numbers of the pit pencils Faber Castell as opposed to the names and I'm thinking this must be a burnt um umber just 
add some richness to some of those stripes. It's a lovely, rich golden colour. And uh, it's probably a bit hard to tell from the, the video, but the pastel pencils start going down. I'm sort of on the second or third layer here and uh, the pastel pencils start going down quite nicely and smoothly and you can almost begin to blend the colours and I'll just start giving the hint of fur uh, here I'm always paying attention to which direction the fur is laying and I think what I might do is a little focus tutorial on that um, in due course and to show you actually how important it really is that you get the fur laying in the right direction because it can completely change the structure of an animal's face um, if you put it down the wrong, going in the wrong direction. So it is one of the really, really important things I would tell everyone to focus on is always make sure you're paying attention to which direction the fur is lying and keep your pencil strokes going in that direction at all times. Because you can end up with a very funny looking animal if you don't. Definitely, some of the highlights are going to really need to be brought out in the end. But this is the beauty of pastel matte paper and pastels. You can do lots and lots of layers on it. So don't worry if it's not looking quite there yet. We can always go in later and do that. There's a bit of light just running across his top of his head there, just catching it. Sorry, my hands keep hiding the pencils the way I hold them. I'm sure I'll learn to do a better job of that. As I make more videos, I'll learn how to get them better for you. Going back in with the uh, burnt ochre Derwent pencil there and just softening the transition between the lighter pit above his eye and I don't I hope you can see how it is blend, beginning to blend. I can go over again and it just it just makes the it's just nice and soft gradual blend no hard lines but like I say you need to have a couple of layers or you know at least be on your second layer of pastel to start getting that I'm not got to forget the shadows above his eyes I'll come in with that later it's almost a grey colour so I'm going to finish just getting in the basics of the cat and his colours on his face, his orange tabbiness, orange tabbiness, that's even a, a thing. Now I'm coming in and I can add a few sort of pastel strokes, some lines to try and depict individual fur, strands of fur here. Just get some definition. You see here we haven't got the two layers really. 
not really starting on the second layer but when we do we can actually start to blend a bit better now this is Phoenician red again a Derwent and it's quite another it's another good color for these sort of ginger animals it's quite good it's not as warm or as orange tone undertones as the uh, as the ochres and uh, yeah, it's quite good for some of the shadow shadow areas I just wanted to bring that in again and re-establish this area it's, and now I've got it blocked in I can start adding some detail over the top Just keep switching back between the ochre and the uh, and the saffron mainly, just to get those first couple of layers down, get everything in the right position, or mainly in the right position. I can always still adjust it if I need to. I can see the structure of his face taking shape nicely now, which is what we want. And then we can go in later. And really bring out the details, or as much detail as we can get in a, in a piece this small. And uh, the highlights and the shadows really bring out those tones I'm definitely going to need some ivory which is brighter and lighter than the saffron they're quite close but like I said I didn't think the saffron would be quite light enough for the lightest highlights and you will get used to knowing what pencils you want for what part um, I mean obviously you don't always know sometimes it takes a bit of figuring out but with time you'll you you'll pretty much know 90% what you need um, when and I just noticed that I've got his fur going slightly the wrong direction there it was going towards the outside of his face and it actually it comes up and it comes in there and again that or he wouldn't it didn't really notice as a problem then but I think if I'd gone much further in the portrait with his fur in the wrong direction it would have changed the shape of his face and he would not really be looking how you'd want him to look Slightly got the uh, that's it. He does look quite flat at the moment very 3d but don't worry that will all change fairly soon so I was a bit too much of a straight line across the top I'm just going and adjust that before I forget sometimes you have to just quickly do these things when you see them otherwise you forget and then you're staring you've been staring at the portrait so long you can't really see what is wrong even though you know something's wrong so sometimes best to do them while you think about it just mm. 
need to put a little catch light in the eye. I can't see one in the right eye, but there's one in the left eye there. There we go, that brings him to life a bit more, doesn't it? And while I've got the white, just put a bit in here above his eye and a little bit underneath. Like I say, I normally do these last, but sometimes I can see paintings that look quite flat. Um, this is really where you need to pay attention to your lights and darks, really give it shape, um, make the piece pop, look 3D. If you've got it flat, you know, not much contrast between the colours, then it's going to, yeah, it's just going to look, it's going to look flat, it won't, it won't stand out, it won't have life to it. And I think you can see, even just by adding that bit of white, how much it's just made a difference. Now, I haven't put a lot down, but it's really made a difference. It's made made it a bit punchier, if that's the word I'm looking for. I've never got the right words. I'm just going to go back to there didn't really get the shape right that I wanted so I'm just going to go over it just filling in another highlight up here it's just adding some of those wispy bits of fur that go in his ear not whiskers like I said earlier never mind just continuing with the saffron uh, as and when I as and where I think necessary No, I'm a bit random like that I've always worked in a fairly random manner I don't know if it becomes if it's because I'm self-taught but it I don't know it sort of helps to bring it all together and sometimes I'll work on one section and then go on to the next and but I tend to be a bit of a, a jumper all over the portrait. I don't think it should stop you uh, learning what you want to learn though. I think just the shape of his mouth is bugging me a bit. I think it's because it comes up here. It looks like he's got more of a smile on his face but this one this side the right side just get if I might help if I just pop in those whisker lines might just help give the shape to his face and help what I'm looking at I'm starting to question why I chose this cat portrait to be my first tutorial because I actually find cats really tricky to do um, much trickier than dogs even trickier than horses. Strange. 
I don't know why. Maybe it's because I don't get as as, as much uh, as much cap commissions. I don't know. So not only am I trying to um, think of the best way to teach you or give a, you know give some guidance, <laughs> I'm also struggling a bit myself. But never mind. We like a challenge. I don't know how well you can see here, but I am just taking it over the edge the pan bustle a bit. And it goes over quite easily. Got to be careful not to lose the shape of his face too much. line there just just fades out a bit doesn't quite reach his eye just soften it a bit a bit, bit of a too hard a line it's quite important as you go along in your portrait to look at look at the lines that you're making and the marks you're making compared to the fur and whether they're soft and hard lines that you need shape of that ear it's not quite right might need to fiddle with that some more in fact I definitely will just it comes out here that shape it's a bit better just pop some of those in it needs to come to a bit more of a point there I'll just grab my pan pastel trying to Let's see if I can just get that shape right oh sorry I've moved the paper there a bit better but it might need some more work just want to soften those edges there oops that's not a colour I need urgently I've just dropped on the floor um, I'm going to re reach for the Venetian red again here I think just bring down that shadow a bit more his mouth. It's soften. It's not such a hard line on that side between the between the mouth, or sorry, his chin and under his chin. This is the Derwent Brown Earth. I'm going over that umber a bit. Just bring down that shadow. It's quite important the shadow under his face here to, to give me an idea that the overall shape of his face is working. So each part is so important and if one part's off it can it can change the, the the shape of the whole piece and you can be sitting there struggling and not working out why and even even something as simple as a the shape underneath can really if that's not right can really distort distort him now if anyone's wondering what I've got my pencil in here it's a pencil extender you can get them on Amazon um, or from most good 
um, art supply stores, Jackson's Art, Great Art, and they're fantastic for really getting that last bit out of your pencils. Um, otherwise, you end up throwing so and there's so much in there. We can see, you know, I've got it right down, getting it right down, and I'll get probably another sharpen or two out of that. So they really are worth it, and they're not very expensive. And they're uh, something every artist should have in their toolbox. I'll return to the uh, burnt ochre here just to soften. blend in some of these bits I don't, just don't want these hard lines you know animals don't really have hard lines to them and uh, this is what I love about pastels is you can get so much detail in with them but they have this lovely soft quality see here you almost lose the line between his mouth and his chin there. Oh, I want to replicate that and that looks quite good. And I'm just gonna go back to his ear. The Venetian red. I had a shadow in there. It's almost like a dip, but I don't want try and capture the pink inside his ear and they're not his ears aren't bright pink inside in the reference photo so this is quite a good colour to use it has got a pinky hint to it use a bit on his nose there but his nose does need some brighter pink to it and there's a bit of a shadow there just carefully looking at the shape this fur line we need to uh, put some shadows in as well you see it's gone over the pan pastel there where, where I've gone over the outline with it when I was putting down the background and this is the beauty of them they are easy to go over his ears got quite a curved tip and I think you know, we can safely say that his face is taking a nice shape it's pretty much how I want it I think proportion wise um, I'm going to grab the grey and just put this shadow in here um, not the one I want it's a warm grey really so yeah Carbacello it's warm it's warm grey it's their darkest warm grey code number 708 again another brand that I'm not great with on the uh, names I know it's warm grey something. Just want to get this shadow in here now. And he does have a bit of grey under his mouth. There we go. And perhaps a bit of grey here, warm grey, maybe. This side really needs darkening up. It's not much of a enough of a contrast between the side that's in the light and the side that isn't in the light. So I think I'm going to have to find a darker brown for this uh, in a second. Um, need to, yeah, I'll just you know, go back to his ears and there some of these darker mm -hmm. 
Um, just looking at that, that needs to be shapes wrong here. I need to bring it up a bit. That's it. Sort of a round, rounded lump. This needs to go a bit higher and I think I need to bring the shadow down a bit further. Um, go too dark, a bit of Venetian red. If I did go too dark, I can I can lighten it again, but try to avoid that. It's always easier to go darker than it is to go lighter, even with pastels. Even though they have this amazing ability to go light, everyone says, "Oh, I work pastels uh, dark to light." It's you know, da da da, and yeah, you can, and they are amazing for it. But I still like to. I still find it harder to go dark to light. I mean, I don't worry if I go too dark, too dark like I say, but uh, it is still nice to not worry about lightening something if you get it wrong. Just that is a warm grey there, but it's still got a bit of a pinky, orangey hue to it. Gradually, slowly, just building up the layers, building up the depth. It's back to the 187, or I think it's burnt ochre of the pits. I want to really try and bring out some of the orange. The tabby stripes do need some tidying up, but I'm just going to go in with some of the fur too and the rest of his face and really try and bring out the uh, warmth in his coat. His face isn't quite right. Are we forever fiddling with their face trying to get it to look right? It's going to bug me if I don't get it looking right. Just put some more burnt ochre in there. Definitely need to find a colour to punch up that shadow underneath. Again, this is being chewed by my dog. Nice. But it's code 177, paper castle pit pencil. And I think I have to start adding some of this dark brown. And the shadows now to really Do 
to really make him stand out. Get some proper shape to him. I need a bit of a ready, add a bit of a ready colour to some of these ginger stripes. As well as the orange, I think I am going to reach for Again, I can't remember the name of it. All these names are escaping me today. Karen Dash. I will mention the name somewhere, but we just want a bit of red to under underlying the shadows and the ginger parts, I think. to go through with a lighter pencil and separate up some of these tabby stripes They've merged into one a bit too much actually some of this red will work in the, the pink of his ears is bugging me. Oh, see I told you cat's mouths and me just don't get along. that that's bugging me slightly I'm quite pleased with how he's, how he's coming along just need a bit more shadow definitely looks more shadow down this side but again I'm just build it up slowly rush in there and go too dark and that line is a bit too sharp there even though it's in shade don't want it too dark too harsh some of that red it gives a nice undertone to the shadow
gonna just gradually going all over the head adding the tones where I want to it's almost almost a bit I suppose it's similar to glazing really I'm just gently going over the colors to add depth and richness to his fur change the hue slightly and I'm not pressing down too hard just very gently with this pencil um, and it has a similar effect to, to glazing I need to break up some of those lines because they're not actually lines lots of little dots that almost merge together to look like lines but they're not more linear on this side again I think it's the way the shadow forms but again they're not really lines some shadow here it's, uh, it's probably quite hard to tell but I am actually also blending with the pencil where I need to now we're what, on the third and fourth layer in places and actually use the pencil to blend a lot easier a lot better better effect and works really well I've gone back to the derwent raw not raw amber burnt ochre not burnt ochre I'll get there in a minute uh, brown earth this is proving quite a good colour for the shadows I've decided now as I've gone further along the raw amber was probably just had too much of a green hint to it so whilst it seemed okay for the eyes it hasn't really proved itself later on sorry I've gone back to the I keep going reaching for another colour color, but back to the brown earth really face isn't looking right this is a warm grey um, by the Carbothello range it's code number 706 I just can't get this bit to look right it's going to fight me all the way I think annoying but I guess it just proves we don't it doesn't matter how many years you've been drawing you still don't always have it easy I'm going to try the burnt ochre again maybe thin down that stripe was maybe looking a bit too thick line between his nose and uh, his mouth but as you can see you can go light over dark um, even though I said I tried to avoid it just 
want to just keep going in with that layers, try and get it to look right. Just edit it, editing, just softening, thinking ahead to edit when I edit the video there I think, uh, just softening that shadow a bit, tweaking it. Um, warm warm grey 706 um, oh, I need to put that there um, now I did say not so long ago that I don't always immediately go to sharpen my pencils but I think we uh, just for these really fine details here I got away with picking some of them out without sharpening it but because it's a small painting and because it's quite intricate I am going to have to use a sharpened pencil um, just darkening up these stripes again that's one thing you do find with pastels is you have to often re-establish lights, darks, tones. Uh, it's why I work with my pastels not upright on an easel or vertical because the pastel tends to drop down and can land all over the painting. And I have it at a slight angle and it does tend to minimise it, it doesn't get rid of it all. Um, and if you blow, obviously blow the dust you'll get it over the painting so you do have to you know re-establish re them and uh, yeah like I say I have to I had to sharpen the pencil to get these little little details in um, I'm not gonna get away with not used a bit of the 283 there pit pencil to darken up the stripes and now I've gone in with the burnt ochre again pit just to add the impression of some fur Two eight three, just to darken his mark under his eye there. Guess I don't want to accentuate it too much in case it's a tear stain, but I don't think it is. And it's you know, don't be afraid to show your portraits to your clients. You put something in there, and you th you're not hundred percent sure it's there. It can always be taken out. I always give people a chance to. Um, let me know if there's any amendments to the work. And like I say, as I said earlier, pastels are such a forgiving medium. It's not too much of a problem if you need to. Now, this little stripe up here is too thick and too dark. So now we've got most of the everything where we want it, apart from a few bits which might need tre tweaking. We're just refining the bits as we go, um, making sure we're happy with everything, making sure everything's in place, getting the right tone, getting the right depth. Um, I always go over and give my paintings once over when I've finished as well so it won't be the last time but uh, I'll try and get it right before I move on to his his chest uh, 
and uh, there is a hint of that, that goes a bit closer to his eye there I think we need to just bring the edge of his ear in a bit the edge there doing it at an awkward angle so you can see on the camera but I really hope you can't hear my dummy rumbling because I'm starving we've ordered a Chinese takeaway tonight which I'm really looking forward to bit of his ear there. I still think I might need to fill the um, the uh, grey background in a bit closer to his ear. The shape's not right but I'm going to have to move my canvas to do that so um, or move my drawing around I think to get my arm in the right angle. Unfortunately I <laughs> it's just not going to work that way. So I won't be able to show you that. Wow. Um, but I think you can get the idea from what I've been doing before. Um, you know, you know, go around and tidy up bits. It goes up a bit there. Um, Filling in the pink of his nose is going to help when I get to it in a minute. I think that might just help with this shape here that I'm struggling with. Um, I am happier with it though. Now, I did say I've sharpened my pencil. Um, and while it's still sharp, before I wear it down, I'm going to put in these whiskers like this and on this side I'm going to put some in and it's particularly important for the these whiskers here that I'm going to add in we want a really sharp pencil for that we don't want to be fiddling around trying to find a sharp edge and filling them in we want to know and as you do the whisker, start with, you know, don't want to press too hard, but reasonable pressure. And then as you get to the end of the whisker, you need to lessen the pressure and that should bring it to a point like so. Pressure, loosen, pressure, loosen, pressure, loosen. Like so. It might show up a bit better on the dark side. So find your point, pressure, loosen. And you see how it starts off thicker and ends up um, thinner at the end, which is what you want. Pressure, loosen. Pressure, loosen. Pressure, loosen. And sometimes I just tend to Make sure you can't see where the whisker starts or it's not too obvious. You don't want too much of an obvious beginning to it. And 
that's how I do my whiskers in pastels. Pressure loosen. Lots of whiskers. Oh, there's some up here. There's a couple here. Um, it doesn't seem to be. I can't really see them on this side, but I think just because we probably know they're there. There we go. I'm just going to go back in. Um, just bring this up slightly. on just I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do his nose quickly before I fiddle on any more with his face. I think this is flesh pink. I can't remember, but it's 132 in the pit range. Faber Castell pit. Um, I'm just blocking all his nose in one pink colour for the time being just to get the shape that I want. Under his nostrils, as you can see, it's um, quite a bit darker. I did sharpen a colour for that, and I didn't know where I've put it. Oh, yeah, there we go. I need a burnt carmine, I think. I can't remember what colour this is. This is 225 pit, but just adding his little nostrils in. Um, I didn't sharpen that very well, it's a bit of a shape. That is a bit too ready pink. We will tone that down somewhat. Quite a lot. Um, got this lovely light, or is it light or pale flesh pink? Um, 681 in the Carbothello range and I'm going to use that to softly blend into the fur of his nose here. This pink I use a lot for highlights as well, um, and fur, and lots of different coloured fur actually. It's a great pencil, it's one that I would highly recommend you have. Now, I'll just try the burnt carmine. It is not sharp, so I'm going to have to sharpen it while I lean over. My chair will squeak. But this is a this is a lovely colour. It comes in most ranges. I, I just happen to have a Derwent one to hand. That's what I'm going to use. Be quite handy. Again, these are small details I'm putting in, so I am going to sharpen this to a point. see it's much much darker quite so red or bright pink as the other one which is good because that's what we wanted and just need to add a bit of shadow Now I think I need to still tone down a bit of that pink. Um, I'm trying to think what colour. Um, go in with burnt umber, which is not 
black it's derwent again it's not black but it's it's quite a nice dark shade shadows it's almost got a purpley undertone to it so it's quite good i suppose for noses and where you're doing pinks of his nose a bit nostrils and just tiny tweaks you're not like I say you're not going to get all the detail in it's about giving the impression of the shapes and so on and this size I mean we're working in a tiny space you can see by the size of my pencil compared to his nose so yeah, it's tricky. Just adding a bit of this burnt carmine to his ears, actually, the shade in his ears. Got good colour for that. I have got always... Oh, didn't mean to do that. Well, this is, gives you a good example of um, how you can um, go over pastel, so put that line there, blend it out um, what colour do I need, Venetian red I think blended it out but, and this is why pastels are so forgiving and I think why I love them so much see I don't think you'd even know it was there now would you and I can get my white and I can just put in my fur again, wispy ear fur, I love my technical terms, um, not quite the right shape on the inside of the ear there, just seen that needs to come more to, not square but the edge is too right shape the tip wasn't the right shape I, think I might just add a bit of this pink 132 by Faber Castell it's a good colour to have in your arsenal a bit too pinky pink there I don't know whether more flesh pink tone it down no uh, this is a Caran d'Ache and it's 745 is the number probably can't see that 745 this might tone it down a bit it's uh, not sure what colour they call it Excuse the squeak on my chair there. And uh, yeah, I think. Oh, now I just missed a few bits. There's a few highlights coming in out. They almost look like lots of short whiskers, but I don't think they are. I don't quite know. Put them in. There is a whisker there, so there might be whiskers. And I think I'm just going to go in finally with the white and pick out the really bright highlights that I want. I might, and I probably will come back to this, but... whole I'm quite pleased with how he's turning out and like I say I probably will come back and fiddle with bits or oh, just want to get the burnt oak ochre 
on here a bit. Um, that needs to be lightened up there a bit more. See, when you put the highlights in, it's funny, you go, oh, well, I just need to tweak this, and oh, actually, I just need to adjust that bit. So it's, it's amazing how, uh, what a difference they make. Um, I need to soften that shadow, I think. Um, that was a bit of the Derwent Burnt Ochre, and I think I want a bit of their Saffron too, just to tone that down, blend in those shadows a bit. Don't want it too hard. Harsher line. Yeah, that's a bit of a harsh line there too. And there. And here we go. I think we need to blend that out a bit. Getting a harsh line on his. No. Still going to just go in and that feels too white. And I'm using the burnt ochre to blend that out. Um, and maybe I think the Venetian red. I don't want to make that light, it's too much of a line there. There we go, I think, apart from any tweaks that I see um, with fresh eyes, I'm nearly there. Oh, I'm just going to lighten his eye. I think maybe I need to darken it, and I think needs to be a bit darker inside but I haven't got the green to do it I don't think no I think it's going to have to be I'll try this seal this is no sorry about my indecisiveness here um, I'm not quite sure what colour I want to use it will come to me maybe I'll even dive in with the black hmm Oh, no, I'll use the burnt ochre. That's what I'll use. Burnt umber, sorry, burnt umber. I don't use burnt ochre. Burnt umber from Derwent. That's what. Just, I need to be a bit more shadow. correspond with that side of the face. I think I'm going to need the black just to show that to find the edges. There's no catch light in this eye. It's tempting to put one in but I'm not going to. Though I might just, I think it does extend a bit over to that eye that side of the eye, the catch light, and this does need a bit of lightening. Picking up the light at the bottom there. Um, and that I used, it's 700, it's a, I think it's a warm, but it's warm grey, 700, Carbothello. Um, it's a warm grey, but it's very pale. Again, very good for highlights. I often put it down as a base layer on white fur. Um, but we'll talk more about that when we go to do white fur and now I'm looking for my ivory because I'll just blow that dust off oh see a little bit of that yeah I think we're nearly there, there might be some bits that I see to 
to do later but all in all just change the shape of that burnt ochre using the burnt ochre from Derwin um, all that needs curving but yeah I think the rest we need to see maybe with fresh eyes um, yeah I'm going to leave it at that for now